In this video I'm going to introduce the concept of vectors and I'm going to do this by taking the example of orienteering. So for the first example I'm going to take a basic route where you walk five miles east and then six miles north and then five miles west. And the question is how far are you from the start which is your displacement and how far have you walked in total which is your distance uh, moved from the start point. So to answer this question, I'm going to start with a diagram. And so I've got a starting point, and then I'm going to draw an arrow five miles east. So this line is in proportion to the distance traveled, and also there's an arrow to show the direction. Then I go six miles north, and then five miles west. So I can see that I've ended up six miles north from where I started. So that's my displacement, and my total distance walked is 16 miles. So if it took me four hours to complete that route, what's the average speed, and what's the average velocity? Well, speed is distance over time, so we've gone 16 miles total distance divided by four hours, so we've gone four miles per hour. That's our average speed. Now, velocity is displacement over time and our total displacement is only six miles so from the start point to the finish point we're only six miles away so the average velocity is 1.5 miles per hour now let's consider another route uh, this route requires you to walk five miles change direction walk six miles then change direction and then walk another five miles and again the question is how far are you from the start and how far have you walked well the starting point's here, and because there were there were only magnitudes given, there weren't any directions given, um, you could end up anywhere really. The total distance walked is 16 miles, but you could end up anywhere within a 16 mile radius of your starting point, and so basically you're completely lost, because the directions only gave distances, it didn't give uh, any direction. So this is just to illustrate the, the importance that vectors have both magnitude and direction associated with them. And so this route is absolutely useless. Route 3 then, let's consider this example where we walk 3 miles east, then we walk 4 miles north. And again the question is how far are you from the start? Um, but now we're introducing a slightly different element to this. How many degrees from east would you have to be to walk directly from the start to the position that you're at now. So again, let's draw a diagram where we've gone three miles east, four miles north, and we can see that to go directly from the start to the finish, we end up creating a right-angled triangle. And we've got the hypotenuse of this triangle labeled as H, um, so that's the technical term for this distance that's opposite to the right angle. So H is the hypotenuse, and that is opposite to the right angle here. OK, so we can use Pythagoras to work out that distance. Um, so h squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. So if we work these out in steps, we can find out that h equals 5. So that's 5 miles in that direction. So we're 5 miles from the start, but what about the direction? So we need to work out this angle here, theta. And we're going to need to use trigonometry to do that. So in trigonometry, for a right angle triangle, we refer to some different um, terms for the different lines. So we've already mentioned the hypotenuse. We've also got the adjacent, which is against or adjacent to this angle. And we've got the opposite, which is opposite to this angle here. So one of the trigonometry definitions or um, terms that we can use is sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse and if we take the inverse of both sides so arc sine of both sides or inverse sine then we can say theta equals arc sine of opposite over hypotenuse this term here sometimes gets referred to as a sine or sine to the minus one uh, you'll see different terminology in different places so now if we put some numbers into this we can say arc sine 4 divided by 5 will give us the angle and it's 53.13 degrees to two decimal places. Let's put this into the calculator 
often on a scientific calculator you'll need to press the shift button and then the sign button and just above that is the sine to the minus one you then have to of course do four divided by five and press equals and that should give you your answer now here's another route this is one for you to try so if you want to pause the video and give that a go feel free to do that route five is a slightly different uh, example where we're giving a, a distance to walk in a northeasterly direction but we're, we need to be exactly four degree, 40 degrees from east to do this. So when I refer to northeasterly here, it's just approximately in that direction. Uh, the exact direction is 40 degrees from east. And again, the question is how far north are you from the start? Uh, and how far east are you from the start? So these are slightly different questions to we've had, that we've had previously. And in this example, again, we need to draw a diagram and we've got the angle this time given as 40 degrees and the distance is 8 miles. So using trigonometry, we can go back to sine theta. If we multiply both sides by h, we get h times sine theta equals opposite. So if we put the numbers in, we can see that we're 5.14 miles north. And now we need to think about east. So we could use Pythagoras because we know that h squared equals a squared plus o squared and if we rearrange that by subtracting o squared from both sides we can get a squared. Plotting in the numbers gives us 6.13 miles east. Another way we could do this is through trigonometry and we could use cos theta equals a divided by h. Multiply both sides by h to give h times cos theta equals a. If we put some numbers into this, again, we get 6.13 miles east. Finally, here's one for you to try if you want to give this a go. And then a final word on vectors. Vectors have both magnitude and direction. So in maths, we talk about scalars, and these are just numbers with a magnitude. So things like length, area, volume, speed, etc., Vectors have both magnitude and direction, so displacement, uh, velocity, acceleration, etc. So these are two sort of key terms, uh, terminology that you need to know about, and this is the main difference. Scalars only have magnitude, but vectors have magnitude and direction. So that's been a short inter uh, video introducing vectors. Thanks for watching.